Hi, everybody. I have the special privilege this morning of having Scott Sioni from the Nibiru Channel. Hi, Scott. How you doing, Steve? Doing great. It's Tuesday, December 20th, 2016. Scott and I have been talking um, co almost constantly over the last, I don't know, four or five days about all this wave of energy stuff that's going on right now, Scott. And uh, I know you've been reporting on it, too. Uh, uh, you know, what have you learned recently? Have you seen anything new or? Well, actually, I just got some information very, very early this morning, actually, you know, kind of in the middle of the night. And uh, I have a real good military friend of mine who was in the military for about 22 years, worked in special intelligence, and he's retired now. And uh, every now and then, you know, we get together and we talk about some things. And we were talking about this cosmic wave of energy and also misinformation or disinformation campaigns that are actually being put together and have been put together approximately nine months ago. So that kind of makes me wonder, you know, what exactly is going on? You know, I know we have this coronal hole that is facing the earth and the possibilities of, you know, catastrophic earthquakes, which I just checked the earthquake tracker minutes ago and there are some pretty significant earthquakes popping off all over the world. But um, as far as this massive cosmic wave of energy, um, it's been told to me that it was set up as a disinformation campaign to, to literally cover up Planet X, Nibiru, and, uh, and some other things. So, you know, it's kind of got me a little mad because once again, you know, we're, we're looking for the truth where we are owed the truth and we get nothing but lies. I'm down, I'm down man. I, and again, it's, that's what we're, that's why we do these channels. We don't say we know everything. I mean, I've never once heard you say, Scott, that you are the proprietor of secret knowledge or anything like that. We're not, we're not, we are just stumbling and bumbling through this thing with everybody else is what we're doing. Right. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. And all we're doing is putting a face and articulating a position of a great group of people. But one of the things that you said today, though, that made a lot of sense to me is that we might, we might be looking at the change of our, of our North and South Pole as this Planet X systems continues to approach. And you know what really bothers me about that is it seems like they're trying to get people to come out and say things like I did yesterday, right? So I'll, I'll go back to integrated space weather here, right? This is what we looked at yesterday, Scott. And if you were listening to, you know, kind of the channels, I don't, I'm not going to name anybody. I'm not going to try to call anybody out today. That's not my goal. But if you were listening to all the channels that are reporting on this, you would think that by December 25th, the earth is going to get wiped out by this cosmic wave of energy which just so happens to be showing up on our instruments right now, right? Yeah, I see that baby rolling around there. Yeah, so if you look at the far right one, Scott, I don't know if I shared this uh, model with you recently, but you can see that stereo, uh, I think this is stereo B, got smacked, and right now stereo A is in the crosshairs of this kind of energy wave here that you see coming from, according to this, uh, to this chart, um, coming from somewhere outside of the inner solar system and that energy is increasingly going towards the sun. It's not coming away from the sun, but it's coming, it, it's not going out of the sun like a normal coronal polar burst, but it's rather coming from the outside or apparently from the outside of the solar system in. Now, I don't know. So when they showed that cosmic wave, and I'll show the one that, oh gosh, if I can just find it real quick here. Uh, sorry about that. I should have this ready. And this is the mimic, okay? Um, this is that um, everybody was talking about this wave yesterday, okay? Well, if you look at integrated space weather, there was no reason for us to really have a big wave of energy hitting the Earth other than that coronal hole, guys. So that validates what you're saying. That's not a wave of energy. That's just us facing the coronal hole, bro. Yeah, um, well, speaking of that computer model that you just showed, uh, I did a video on it yesterday before I, you know, got the information that I got in the middle of the night last night and, uh, the information that I got based on this, 
um, this computer model, total precipitation or precipitable water, um, was faked. That's what I've been hearing too, man. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like, so we are serious researchers. We're all trying to find the truth, right? And we use these instruments to try to understand. This, by the way, is from uh, the University of Wisconsin, which does provide great astronomical data. So don't, don't for a second doubt that, you know, that the information that you'll get from there isn't good. They also get this information from government sources. So it's not like they generate this data. It's refed to us through the University of Wisconsin. The reason I say that, Scott, University of Wisconsin astronomical programs, if you want to see where things are supposed to be in the sky, is the best, by far and away, the best um, program for that. So I don't want people to think that that's not working. But this is, according to many of my sources as well, this is fake. Yeah, it was, a, it was just a computer animation that was put together. The information was leaked out and, you know, immediately placed into you know, the, immediately placed into YouTube because, I mean, you know, YouTube is a very, very powerful resource now. And they know that they're not going to shut YouTube down. They know that they're not going to just arbitrarily walk through and just shut channels down because then that's going to throw up red flags. That's what has been told to me. So, well, yeah, my community, the community that I have, and again, I see manipulation afoot here, right? Um, my channel, it, you know, when it got shut down and we were expecting it to come up any day now, but when it was get, when it got shut down for this 10 days, I, I keep wondering, well, why would they shut me down? And I'm starting to suspect because I don't, I don't just, I don't think we buy things hook, line and sinker like everybody else do. No, right? absolutely. And I don't do it. We don't do it. Right. Yeah. And speaking of your shutdown, um, I sent another email this morning to the copyright office of YouTube and I've been, you know, because they hit me with the same copyright strike that they hit you with from the office of Naval research using that fake uh, YouTube channel and that fake email address. Well, I just wanted to, you know, catch some contact with the copyright office and say, hey, listen, okay, it's been 14 days and I put my dispute up immediately upon receiving that fake copyright strike. It's only supposed to be 10 days and I don't see how it takes 10 days to investigate all of this whenever I laid it out for you on a silver platter and they have still not removed my copyright strike or your copyright strike. So I went back to check out that fake YouTube channel and the YouTube channel is gone and the website that was attached to that YouTube channel is gone, no longer on the internet. And the email, if you send an email to the fake email address, it bounces back to you. So. That just goes to show you that there are powers that be that are trying little sneaky ways to quiet us down, shut us up temporarily, or sabotage us when we are really, really onto something. And the video I made with that Sechi footage was just absolutely devastating because we had the telescopic photograph of that planet that planetary object, and it matched what was seen on the Sechi footage. And I still have my video saved in my computer. And I was actually thinking about re-uploading it, but you know, I don't want to step on any toes at YouTube. I'll let them go through their policies and their procedures. But when that video comes back up and gets released from YouTube, I'm going to blast it all over. That's what I've got. I've got the three videos with my cop, the ones that got the, that uh, caught the copyright strikes. Two of them were the Sechi one that you talked about. The other one was Scott Ferguson. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't even worry about him. No, I'm not. And and in the thing of it is, is that you know, it's it's. I, I really do believe that Scott got caught in the in between um, me and the PTB is what happened, and that's not a good place to be, Scott. I, if I were you, I'd try to backtrack about as fast as I could. You don't want to get into my battle. You really don't. Well, it's an ongoing battle each and every day. I mean, there are, there are days where I'm afraid to close my eyes and go to sleep because, you know, you have to constantly be on guard. You know, this is a war. 
you know, it's not a war between us and these stupid little trolls, but this is just basically a war between us who are the truth seekers and the ones who are literally trying to deceive, not just me and you, but man, they're literally trying to deceive the entire world. And that, my friend, that's just not right. No, it's not. It's not. And here's something I wanted to bring up today along that line before we get too far into it. And here is a, an, an article from ESA. This is the European Space Agency. And they're talking about jet streams inside of the Earth. What Whoa. is going on here? Whoa. What is going on here? A again, th it just seems like they con continually leak this information. Now, what this leads me to, Scott, is the story of Antarctica and what's going on in Antarctica right now. Because here's what I'm finding out, okay? Obviously, we have huge contingents from every country down there right now. We've had the Pope. We've had the, um, I can't remember what the proper name of the Russian Orthodox leader was down there. I call him the Russian Pope. I call him the Russian Pope. <laughs> yeah, me too. We had John Kerry going down there, the Secretary of State on election day. We have Buzz Aldrin coming back because he was sick from apparently touching a pyramid or something, okay, down there. Like, remember how when we first started trying to penetrate the king's tombs in Egypt, yeah. people would mysteriously get sick, like yes. it was a church or something? That kind of thing happened to him, okay? That's what the story is on the street that I've heard. What have you heard about Antarctica, and why would that be important to any of this discussion? Well, as far as uh, the John Glenn's death, I, I caught an interview with, uh, with him on the Today Show. And he said that um, his, his problem was based on some altitude sickness. He was at an elevation of about 9,000 feet. The air was thin, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know, whatever. You know, then the man comes back and dies. Um, you know, he's a national hero, but uh, that's a hell of a way to go out. Um, it is, but it doesn't it remind you of the stories that we heard when they opened up Ton and Commons tomb? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Bacterias, things of that nature, cosmic bacterias. Or maybe I mean, dormant bacteria and viruses that haven't seen the light of day for many, many eons, you know? Exactly, exactly. And, and some of the information that I've been getting, because I've been digging into the Antarctic, and some of the information that I've been getting is leading me to believe that there's, it's, it's a fact that there are 10 nations, 10 countries – that have banded together to basically split the Antarctic up like a pizza and form a new nation of countries. Right, almost like an international nation. Exactly, exactly. Then I stumbled onto some information a few days ago that pertained to these massive, massive solar panels that are gathering massive amounts of solar energy they have literally drilled these, oh, basically like uh, if you were going to drill an oil well uh, or in the gas well industry, you would drill down approximately 18,000 feet. And now um, these massive solar stations are right over top of these, what they're calling rods. And they're basically, they're, they're heating the, the Antarctic from down below they're literally trying to melt portions of the antarctic to build upon and they have been building down there they're also tunneling into some of the eastern sides of the mountains i think it's called the dry lands the drylands where, where basically the it's it's dry mm -hmm. it's desolate and there's no snow um they're, you know, have already made roads and things of that nature. And there are literally tens of thousands of people down there. There's military. There's all kinds of people there. Now, I was told that when you look at it on Google Earth, you will not see anything. You will that's where I'm going right now, Scott. I'm going to open up Google Earth so that I can kind of, I, I remember you t telling me about that. So I'm opening that up right now. Yes, there's a long triangular patch on one section near the shore, and I measured it on, on Google, uh, Google Earth with the, the roller uh, instrument, and I, I forget, it was uh, 30 miles long. 30 miles long. And which side was it on? Uh, right there where your cursor is. 
right where that uh, that inlet is, right down below, right, right there. there, right there. And and if you go along, if you go north, I guess that would be north to the right. Uh, start fishing upwards. Uh, yeah, that way. Go that way, and and you'll oh you'll be able to see it. You don't have to zoom in that far. Uh, go towards the shoreline, and uh, oh, there it is. Oh no, that's not it. You'll see it's perfectly rectangular. It's a huge rectangular patch. And when you zoom into it, they took, they took a pixelized picture from the Antarctic and they just pasted it over what they don't want you to see because when you zoom into it, it doesn't match the landscape. Ah, uh, is this where you're talking about right here? No, no, it's further up the other way. Which way, this way? Left, right, up or down? Uh, my right. Oh, there's one. There's one right there that you just passed. But uh, they're they're trying to they're trying to hide the uh, the massive amounts of ice that are um, that are falling off. I was measuring them. Uh, some of them are hundreds of feet long. Some of them are miles long. If you pan out um, and go the other way, uh, I'll be able to spot it. This way? No, the other way. The other way. Pan out more. Okay, that's good. Now go go up. Keep going, keep going. Now you see that long white uh, right there? Yep. Okay, you zoom into that. Now that I couldn't figure out what that was, and uh, that just doesn't belong there. It's been there for weeks. I don't know what it is. Well, let me show you something that kind of matches with what we're talking about here. And this goes back uh, back to winter time, last winter, last December, when I first really was convinced that we were dealing with something unusual that was worthy of a YouTube channel, right? And let's go to, and I'm, it will just take me a second to find it here, Scott. And, and while, while I'm doing that, what it was was we saw huge triangles down in, basically from the South Pole Observatory. Let's see if I can find that quick here. Yeah, there's all kind of stuff going on in the South Pole. Um, there's just a, an extreme amount of stuff going on. Well, and I'll show you some of this stuff. I'm going to show a Sechi photo. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Australia, South Pole. Let's take a look here. So here we have these huge triangles, um, Scott. And let me see if I can get a really good one here. Yeah, this is a good one. January 18th last year, right? Check out that big what? triangle down there, right? What? Yeah, we were looking at this and looking at this and looking at this and this big circle with the ring, you know, this, this which I believe, I always thought was possibly Nibiru or possibly the, the star, but there's, I'm not convinced yet. But what I will tell you, is this triangle and another triangle over here to the right starts to form as well. So these big, huge triangles, to your point, they might even be doing this from space, um, using space technology to increase the melt rate of the, of the ice as well. So again, I think these are man-made objects. I think that this is all part of a, uh, a plan to try to find the technology. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but gosh, if you don't think I'm crazy by now, um, I think that it's a big. I think that they're. I think they're getting ready to turn Antarctica into a into the into the. Okay, I'll just say it. I think that they're trying to turn uh, Antarctica into the new World Order's headquarters. It's a possibility because they're flying the flags already of these countries. They're all in a line. They've already basically made their. I'll call it a pact. Uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 well known. That these countries are flying their flags down there, and uh, I mean, even um, you know, but even Hitler had a fascination with the Antarctic. Well, I think that maybe he thought that he was going to be the one to bring the new world order. I think he really did, and I thought, I think you know, again, now we're into real speculation land, guys. I get it. We're not talking about science. We're not talking about, but we're talking about why would Antarctica be so important to the Nazis first, then subsequently to the United States. Operation High Jump, Admiral Byrd. Go yeah. look those things up, guys. Just look them up, and you'll and you'll get, and your bell will get rung just like Scott and my bell got rung. Okay, yeah, it's been it's been going on for a long time. Like what, back in the '30s? Yeah, uh, yeah, back in the '30s, they really started. I mean, they know something. 
you know, no one's going to want to go down to a frigid, barren area. You know, I could see maybe explorers, but, you know, they're doing a little bit more than just exploring. But let's say, okay, let's say that, that you want, okay, you're going to control the dialogue, and I'm just going to pretend for a second that I'm the New World Order, okay? And I know that Antarctica contains technology from past civilizations. It might even be a portal to the inner earth where there's another race of people that live, um, have lived. There are all these stories, let's say that they're all true, okay? And let's say that we know that the earth is gonna go through a tilt where Antarctica will come out of the ice and become a landmass, a legitimate landmass with natural resources over a 10 to 20 year period, okay? How would I control the dialogue leading up to all of these different events? Well, I certainly wouldn't come out and tell you that I'm going to start a new nation in, in Antarctica. That wouldn't be the first thing I'd say. What I want to do is try to keep you so off balance with scientific information um, about this approaching solar system that you don't know which way is up. Exactly. That's what I would do. I would confuse and confuse and confuse and confuse, right? So when I look at this particular picture, nobody was showing this except for Wayne and I, and I think you might've shown it too, Scott, but this picture from the NL, not the one from Mimic, okay? The one that, was mis that we're claiming is misinformation. There's no reason for a cosmic wave to have hit us like that, guys. However, when this big red band of energy, which I believe to be a connection point with the other solar system, the other star of the solar system, that when that thing kind of co comes across the path of the path of the earth, we might have some disruptions, okay? We might have some earthquakes, there's pressure, all that kind of stuff. But what I would not go as far to say is that we're gonna have an ELE or any kind of a like major cataclysm upon the earth. They want us to be in this constant fear state, Scott. That's what they're looking for. There's no doubt about it. You know, there's no doubt about it. I, I have a friend of mine uh, I spoke to yesterday. He's in an industry where, um, you know, he's, he uses a, a radiation detector. And um, I don't want to go into too much about what he does. But I just asked him if he could do me a favor and uh, if he could just please step outside and uh, take a radiation reading. And he thought I was crazy. He says, man, I'm on holiday vacation, dude. <laughs> you know, you want me to go outside and take a radiation reading? I was like, yeah, can you please do that for me? <laughs> and, uh, and he did, and um, it wasn't very good. It actually tipped into the red zone. Well, that's the other thing you got to worry about with this coronal hull. And this is the thing that people don't talk about with the coronal hull is really you are not getting fusion on the surface of the sun. What that means is that normally what happens on the surface of the sun is all this energy and magnetics and everything are happening inside the sun. And then what happens on the outside is you have basically a fusion all over the outside. That's what scientists tell us, okay? So when we don't have that fusion taking place, what are you getting? You are getting a straight shot into the magnetic power, the electromagnetic power of the inner parts of a star. Yeah, We're not straight. shielded. It doesn't get burned off in fusion. And then those rays, as we know with our magnetosphere being weakened, you know, it just creates more havoc, and that's why I would say that we're seeing more radiation than what's normal. Did you say it's above uh, uh, dangerous levels? Did you hear him say anything about that? Yeah, he was like, what's going on, man? Because he knows what I've been involved in for quite a long time, and he asked me point blank, is there something that I should be telling him? And then, you know, we ended up having a two-hour conversation. And um, he works underground, very far underground in the mining industry and um yep. you know he said is, is is there something that i need to worry about you know because we started talking about earthquakes and uh you know if you're going to be a couple of miles underground well you know i mean pennsylvania is not a earthquake prone area however two years ago uh, i think it was two or three years ago we did have an earthquake here i mean i was literally in the barber's chair getting a haircut when the whole entire building shook and it sounded like a freight train going by and uh, the barber actually cut my ear, mm. uh, you know, uh, with the scissors because he was startled by what was happening. The mirrors were shaking. I can feel it. 
and you know it, it's never happened again now you know we do have a tremendous amount of fracking that goes on in this portion of this state oh i think there's probably 40 50 60 thousand wells probably pennsylvania has more fracking than oklahoma quite frankly oh yeah yeah and i was in the i was in the fracking industry for for five straight years and uh you know our our minimum depth was eighteen thousand feet but um you know, he's in the mining industry. He's into very, very deep, long wall mining. And uh, he goes into West Virginia and everything. And, um, you know, he said the last place he wants to be is if, you know, we get like a, a new Madrid fault line uh, earthquake or something. He doesn't want to be underground. I, I wouldn't want to be five miles underground, two miles. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near being underground. No, but, underground doesn't sound, sound safe to me at this point in the game. No, absolutely not. And, you know, I said to him, I said, well, what are you going to do? And he goes, well, man, he goes, you know, I'm nine months away from retirement. <laughs> oh, so many guys like that, right? Yeah. You know, so it's, uh, it's one of those situations, man. You know, you have to do what you have to do. And it's just like me and you, you know, I mean, we have to do what we have to do. I was sent an email message yesterday by one of the members of the uh, troll group and telling me to just basically pack it up, close my YouTube channels down, and walk away. And I can't even begin to repeat what I sent back as my return email because I don't want to have this uh, video X-rated because it really upset me. And they had, they had those balls to just come out there and ask me, just walk away. Just walk away right now. Well, that's what we detected when we were when we were shut down at WSO. It's like the whole message was just stop. Just stop yeah. it. We're not going to treat you fair. There's not going to be a recourse. I mean, I was just working with a new network, and maybe you're uh, familiar with these guys, but I won't say their name on the air. But it's a network that has a lot of pull with YouTube because they handle a lot of alternative news channels. They handle a lot of controversial content and they have just a great relationship with YouTube. When he first, when the channel first went down, my rep from there had a lawyer send uh, some documentation to try to see if we could get Scott off of his thing. And, and then as he started to delve into the other two strikes, he got just stonewalled, deadwalled. Like he couldn't get a call back. He couldn't get a information back. And when he first talked to me about it, when the channel first went down, in fact, I knew the channel was going to go down when I had two strikes. I said, they only need one more strike and I'm out. He goes, well, you're going to be out then. And he goes, but I'll get your channel up right away. He goes, I've had deleted channels before. This happens all the time. Don't worry about it. Well, here we are at day eight. Okay. It's going, and I'm not quite to my 10th day yet. Or actually I am on the 10th no, day. No, you're, you're past it. Yeah, I'm past 10 days, and yeah. Friday will make 14 days, yeah, right? exactly, because they hit both of us at the same time. But what, what, what you have to realize is that after you um, dispute it, then the 10 days starts after a period. So it's altogether a 14-day period. So both of us are coming up on our our maximum, uh, the limit right now. So I would see your channel coming but back here's up. The guy that here's a guy that knows the industry. Here's a guy that's, you know, an insider with YouTube. I mean, you know, helpful, 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 right? And he told me all the things that I needed to do to protect myself, and, and we do those now. And But right then he thought, oh, we'll get your channel right back up. No big deal. It's just deleted. No big deal. I can get it back up again. This is just a mistake, blah, blah, blah. And he is frustrated right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell you what, I mean, I, I'm very frustrated with, with YouTube also because, you know, I'm, I'm constantly being slandered. Well, both, both of us are constantly being slandered on YouTube with these. Yeah, why are they taking, so I've been, I've been uh, striking them for har cyber harassment and bullying, and I haven't seen anything from that. Yeah, me too. I mean, did you see our Christmas uh, videos, the parody videos that they made about us? No, I won't watch any of their videos. Oh my God, they're they're just absolutely ridiculous, and it makes me think. Wow, if you have that much time on your hands to do something so childish and so stupid, I mean, and, and then you want to call yourselves out there for the truth. Basically, you need a spanking, and you need to be sent back out onto the playground because that's where you belong.
Yeah. Well, and again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to reduce myself to their juvenile, you know, and, and what it is, is it's, it's that so many people respond to that kind of thing positively, but I can tell you most of my subscribers and I know your subscribers who also communicate with me, um, they think it's, they, they, it just basically adds credibility to our case because it says they're being ridiculous. You guys continue to be professional. And that's the way we need to roll. Now, here's a picture that you sent to me this morning, actually, Scott. This is a, one of your subscribers. I'm not going to – why don't you tell us what this is? Yeah, I was uh, – I haven't been in my email uh, over the last couple of days because, you know, we've had so much coming out with this cosmic wave story, the coronal hole, this and that. So I just uh, – about 4 o'clock in the morning, I started getting into my emails from subscribers. And um, – one subscriber, his name's Anthony, and Anthony has sent me some great pictures before, and uh, he was just basically panning through the nighttime sky and taking photographs, just, just taking a bunch of photographs into space, and then he'd go back, you know, download them, and then look at them, and then all of a sudden, he got that jaw-dropping moment that is literally on your screen. And yeah. he sent it to me, and it was several days ago, I believe. I don't know if he said he was looking into the southwest part of the sky, and he captured that. And the winged, the winged planet. Yeah, and I looked at the original photograph, and it's, it's very small in the distance in the photograph, but very clear. And I zoomed in on it, and when I zoomed in on it, I basically almost choked on my coffee. Yeah. I, yep. I was like, wow, I cannot believe this because there's no other planet in our solar system that's going to produce, you know, this, this uh, discharge of this, these wings. Right. And that brings up the, um, the other thing that you sent to me and you said, Hey, Steve, we need to get a hold of Dave Dobbs. So Dave, if you're watching, you know, I have tried to reach out to you a couple times, but look at what happened. This is from December 17th, I believe, right? Yeah. A couple days ago in France. Well, all right. There we go. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that this fits with Dave's um, Dave's uh, uh, analysis of this, and that's what we're going to try to get Dave on. And I'll have you on the show too, Scott, so you can ask him questions. But um, what do you think of this, man? Yeah, I mean, this was I got this from uh, one of my subscribers in France. What I'm what I'm actually finding out is there is some censorship going on in France. Um, I don't have a lot of subscribers there. I do have a few. When they do contact me, they're using cell phones. They're not using their home computers to jump on YouTube and, and things of that nature. Yeah. And Pierre sent me this, and he said, basically, he walked out of his, his flat, his apartment, and there it was. It was li literally coming down out of the sky. At first, he thought it was a plane. Yeah, it then, looks like an airplane contrail or a chemtrail. Yeah. Yeah. But as you're looking at it, he was, he gave me the direct, um, he was in Bordeaux, France, and I looked at Bordeaux. Now, the way that this video is showing, if that was an airplane, which it's not because I, I sent you also the zoomed in version, if that was a plane, it would be nose diving right into the Bay of Biscay. <laughs> but if it was out in uh, out of the extra atmospheric, it would look like it was going straight down. But it's actually just going on the other side of the Earth, just like a planet or the moon. Exactly. So I I did a I did a video on it, you know, and and uh, you know then you have the the people that jump in there and say, oh, that's a plane, and the Kim the the, the trails the contrails are being lit up by the sun. Uh, he took this at five o'clock in the afternoon, and he was he, he sounded like a little devastated from what he saw. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I've seen, I've actually seen this too. Uh, back in November, I actually got a picture of it, and uh, it it was stunning. It just it stunned me, and it takes a while to recover from that stuff. So I don't think Scott Sioni and I are saying that we don't believe that the Nibiru phenomenon is not real. That's not what I'm saying. I still believe that we're going to be intersected with the solar system, 
I believe that we have plenty of evidence to indicate that. We've had pictures of planetary objects. Um, like you got an insight too, Scott, about the um, big Jupiter-like gas giant that we talked about from some sources. What did they say about that gas yeah. giant? Again, um, you know, I, I, I caught that footage from Bondi Beach over there in Australia. Back, basically, me and Jeff P., uh, he was catching some footage on what he thinks was the, the lenses. And th there's no doubt about it. You can see them oscillating and, and, and rotating in the freaking sky. And then, you know, I was using the same website, um, and I captured that striped planet off in the distance behind the sun, the sun illuminating it, did the video on it. And uh, it just so happened that one of my subscribers, his name's Richard, fantastic guy. He took some screenshots of the Bondi beach footage and he enhanced them. And he sent me all four of the photographs. And, you know, even though the original footage was pretty damn good, once Richard enhanced those photographs, you can clearly, clearly see that was once again that striped planet. Then we've, captured, we've all captured it in very thinly veiled or very hard to see, but the one that you had, that picture, go back and look at Scott's channel, guys, and some past videos, you'll see it. That was just an amazing photograph. Yeah, and then the and then the another subscriber who is an avid uh, quote amateur astronomer sent me this photograph of the striped planet up close and personal now i emailed that photograph to jeff p and jeff was just like in complete awe you know and jeff looked over the photograph very very well you can clearly see uh craters in the planet and um i matched it up directly with the bondi beach australian footage and the stripes, the stripe pattern, everything is the same. Did I send you? Did I send you that telescopic photograph of this stripe planet? I'm not sure if you did or not. Let me take a quick peek. But if if you didn't, I mean, you know, uh, I, you guys can see it on Scott's channel if you want to go back and look at it. But yeah. Uh, but the point I wanted to make was, I do still believe that this is going to happen. Now the question here's where I'm going with this, okay? And I know this is going to make me sound nuts, but if you listen to David Ike, okay? You listen to David Icke ever? Yeah, yeah, I've watched uh, several uh, documentaries, interviews. Yeah, so David is one of these people that believe that we've been invaded by an alien species that feeds on our fear. Okay, that's whacked out. I get it. Okay, but it matches the biblical narrative in the sense of what we call demons and or other people would call archons or you know all these different things. And as we start to peel that onion back, whenever I see something that generates fear like this information, the information I'm showing right now on the screen, um, I always am suspicious that it might be somebody trying to cause fear just to feed off of us. I know that sounds strange for a Christian to say that, but that's what I really believe the devil's game is. It quote unquote devil. I believe that, that it's all about fear, generating fear, generating horror, generating pain and suffering, and then they feed on it. That's what I believe. And whenever I see something like this that generates a huge amount of fear, a huge amount of concern, I should be more skeptical. I should have been more skeptical yesterday. And the reason I wanted Scott to come on today was because he helped me to get back into a rational frame of mind on this to say, look, you need to question this information. It might be true. It, this, we would hope to rely on that this would be true. But I also know that the elites want us afraid. And I refuse to be afraid. Scott? Yeah, absolutely. The the I don't have a fear factor. You know, I, I was, um, you know, I actually had a long conversation with Jeff P last night. And, you know, we both said there, I'm, there's nothing that I'm afraid of. Um, you know, basically what I'm trying to say is whenever the day comes and things are so bad, you know, I've lived my life. And I'm taking what's, what's left of the rest of my life. And uh, I kind of feel like I'm giving it back to mankind. That's where I'm at. You know, Thank I mean, you. Whether, whether people think that, oh, you just sit there and you just make dumb YouTube videos and scare people. No, I'm not trying to scare people. I'm trying to open up their eyes and show everybody that we are being lied to. We don't deserve it. No. There is, there is a direct 
and a definite threat to this planet. I mean, there is so much evidence, man. I mean, what else do you have to do other than have the President of the United States stand on the damn White House lawn with NASA officials and other space agencies and spit out the truth? Well, and they keep, they keep saying that it would cause mass panic and blah, 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 blah. Well, I think that's just complete BS, first of all. Number two, I don't know if the effects of this passing of the system are going to be as profound as people want us to believe. It's a script. I believe that they're going to try to manipulate the story to cause such widespread worldwide panic and fear that they will literally do anything the government tells them to do. And yes. that is why you're here, and that is why I'm here. That is why Chris Potter and Jeff P and all these different um, YouTubers have been trying to tell people to go to their spiritual center, to go to God, to get their spiritual houses in order. Not because we're trying to be religious zealots, because we know that's how you combat fear. Okay? And if you can keep your heart in a place of peace, and which I wasn't yesterday, I was pretty disturbed by what I saw. And still I'm pretty, you know, it, it, very interested in what's going on here. But it's, again, do not panic. Do not have fear. That is the mind killer. Okay, just like Dune. Remember that movie Dune, Scott? Yeah. Back in the yep. day, with Sting in it and everybody, it was yeah. still one of the great productions of all time, in my opinion, for science fiction. You know, yeah. you got to keep it together. You know, and, and, and I tell everybody, you you do have to keep it together. You have to keep your mind right. It is the time to band together. Yeah. You know, if you if you if you belong to a, a you know a big church organization or, or or a group or whatever it is, a club, you know, hey, that that's your group. Get it that's together. Right. They call them preppers. They call it what it, whatever they want to call it. You know, bottom line is just like the armies and the, uh, the armed forces of the nation, you know, power is in numbers. So you're not, you know, you're not going to survive by yourself. It's, it's going to take, um, it's going to take a group, but, you know, getting back to what you were just saying about um, uh, mass hysteria, uh, and you, you know, what creates mass hysteria? Black Friday at Walmart. Who's stopping that? I know, right? Um, I and actually people get killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it's like they feed that hysteria, you know. So you got to think about what are they feeding and what are they not feeding, right? And what and what you'll notice is you start to look at it, they'll feed anything that creates that jolt in you for the day. I believe they feed off of that. Now, here's the other, th yeah, and I, and I know that's a crazy theory, but I'm not the only one who holds that theory, okay? The second thing I would say is, and this goes back to Mac Lavelli. They really wanted him dead, man. Um, Mac Lavelli actually was banned by the Roman Catholic Church um, because he was called a heretic for telling the truth, right? One of the things that he told the prince, if you ever go read The Prince, which is a recommended reading on my book list for everybody, you should read Mac Lavelli, The Prince. In there, he talks to the prince and he says, the greatest power on this earth is the people. He says, a republics will fail, princes will fail, subterfuge will fail, military force will fail in the face of the public, in the face of the man, of the common man. And when the common man bands together, that's when they shake. They hate it. They don't want it. They don't want us banding together in love. They don't want us banding together in knowledge and peace and all those things. They don't want it because they know back as far as Machiavelli, back in the Renaissance period, they knew that the people were the most important and the most powerful. And the only way you could control them was to put them to sleep. Well, talking about being put to sleep, I have a little bit of an alert right now. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm, just getting, I'm just getting some intel directly from my guy. He is monitoring the magnetosphere Z-cut solar wind velocity uh, program. and. I believe it is showing a, he said they stopped the feed. They literally stopped the feed. He, I, he just sent me two screenshots of it. And this just, one, Scott. yep, yep, that's it. Zoom in a little bit on that, expand that. Uh, that's it. Yep, he just sent me two clips, 1.22 p.m. And as we speak. Ah, here it's starting to reverse right here. Yeah, 133. Well, he said they stopped the feed. Yeah, because this is 1838 Zulu, um, and it should be, we should be on 1938 Zulu. 
Zep, see, there you go. Yeah. There you go, people, live, right in front of your eyes. The deception continues. And this, again, if by taking away our eyes, what, by taking away our view of this, we can't tell people not to be scared. We can't tell people to, you know what I mean? Wow. See, you know, and this is what I mean. You know, people think me and you get Cracker Jack information. You know, we, we don't. We get credible information from reliable sources. Yeah, some of these people work for the government. They got a bad taste in their mouth because, you know, they're retired. They know what it's all about, and they want to live. They want to continue with their lives. And I've also been told that these people that could be whistleblowers have been personally threatened that if they, they, they continue to divulge information, that their military pensions will be flushed down the toilet. Look at this, Scott. The last image that we have from Eno is uh, back 14, like four hours, five hours ago. <laughs> oh, my. Huh. Yep, there you go, guys. Well, again, this is not a reason to be afraid. This is a reason more to wonder what they're going to try to make the narrative, guys. That's what I want to keep keep pounding home. We don't have to uh, fall for fear. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to operate from fear. Scott, I'll let you close up, and then we'll, we'll get this video up on both of our channels together, okay? Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Steve is uh, absolutely right. I mean, the bottom line is – we're all going to face whatever's out there. We're all going to face it together. There's not going to be one person on this earth that, that will not face it. And if you don't have any type of faith, try to get some type of faith now. Right. If you don't believe in, if you don't believe in God and religion and, you know, the, the, the almighty, then get some type of faith and start doing your own homework. Pay attention. Keep your eyes and your ears open. Listen to our channel subscribe to our channels and and while i'm on the 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 fact of these channels i wanted to let you know that uh it's just come out that youtube played around with the notification settings on certain youtube channels with alternative media meaning if you had notifications set up for specific youtube channels it is now deleted which means you're not going to get notified if me and Steve upload a video onto our channels. You're going to have to come back to the channel every single day. So take the opportunity, go back to our channels, go over, click on the little bell, and reset the notification how you want to receive it, either on your cell phone, in your email. Set it up because YouTube deleted it all. Yeah, and by the way, I sent uh, two complaints to YouTube this morning, direct quotes from, and again, I don't know if it's every subscriber experiences, but a lot of my main, and it's always my main supporters that get whacked. They're the ones that get messed with on my, uh, on my WSO Live. They're the ones that get messed up when I'm, they're trying to send me emails. So they kind of know who supports us and who doesn't, Scott. Again, you know, you know we're, 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 we are literally in a battle for the truth and all the support that you guys give us by watching these videos and giving us the likes and subscribing helps us so much. So thanks for that. And um, you guys will be back with you again here soon um, on both WSO number two channel, which I'll have a link below. The WSO main channel is still down, probably will be for a couple days. Or you can go to Scott's channel, the Nurburu channel. Scott Sioni does the best day-to-day -day news on Nibiru of anybody, and I recommend it highly. Have a good day, everybody. I'd like to thank all of our Nibiru watchers. You guys do a fantastic job. would also like to thank you for your loyal subscribership. You can continue to email your photographs and your video to NibiruPlanetX2016 at gmail.com. And don't forget to share our videos with your friends and family members on Facebook, and subscribe to the Nibiru channel for all of our current updates. And like I always say, keep an eye in the sky.